Hey guys, Mr. Bowman here. In this video, it's the first of them, we're going to look at some of the achieved questions from the more recent exams. And this time around, we're going back to 2015. And I should note the these questions are all from the day one exam. I won't look at the day two exams. I'll leave those um, for other people to look at. So question number one, um, a nice easy one to get you going. We've got x plus 2 4x minus 5, and you've been asked to expand that. So I'm going to use my rainbow method, x times 4x, that's going to get me to 4x squared. I've then got x times minus 5, minus 5x. Then I've got 2 times 4x, so that's plus 8x. Then finally, 2 times negative 5, negative 10. I'm now going to group those terms in the middle together, the x's negative 5x plus 8x, that's going to get me to 3x. So my final answer, 4x squared plus 3x minus 10. Now shifting on to question number two, give the coordinates of the point where the graph, here's our parabola, cuts the x-axis. So I suppose the x-intercept is the really, really important part. And what we know about the x-intercept is if we take it back to the y-axis, it will be equal to zero. And that happens at any point on the x-axis. So that x-axis thing tells us that y is equal to zero. So I'm going to jot down my equation. x, x plus 3 equals zero. I'm going to substitute zero in for y. So that means zero will be equal to x, x plus 3. And now here we've got a quadratic equation. And I like what I've got because it's already equal to zero and it's already factorized. So straight away, I'm going to split into the two parts. So the first answer for x is equal to zero. And the second one, a little bit of work needed here, but x plus three equals to zero. I'm going to do minus three minus three. So my second answer for x is equal to negative three. Question number three, and I've got a factorizing question. 3x squared minus 11x plus 6. So the giveaway here is the 3, which means we're going to be using the grouping method. So I'm going to start by doing 6 times 3 is equal to 18. I've now got to figure out what numbers multiply to this 18 and add to make this 11. Hopefully you're thinking the same as me. I'm getting negative 2 and negative 9. They add to negative 11. They multiply to positive 18. Now that I've got that, I'm going to do my split, and the next line of working is this negative 11x, I'm going to split it into two parts, negative 2x and negative 9x. So let's get that down. So that's going to be equal to 3x squared minus 2x minus 9x plus 3. Hopefully you can see what I've done there. That negative 11x has now been split into two bits. I'm now going to factorize by groups, and that's why it's called the grouping method. This part here, what do they have in common? Only an x, leaving us with 3x minus 2. This part here is next, what do they have in common? And it looks like they've got a, a negative 3 in common, which would leave 3x minus 2 as well. I know I've done this right because I'm getting the same bracket twice, so I haven't stuffed up. I'm going to jot down that bracket, 3x minus 2. I'm not going to write it twice, just once. The leftover bits, x and x minus 3, they are going to come together to form the second bracket. To question number 4, a swing is made by attaching the two ends of a rope on different points of a steel frame. And that's what we've got up here. That's the rope attached to the frame. The height h meters of the rope above the ground at a distance of x meters from the left-hand side of the frame is modeled by this here. So what that's trying to say is this parabola and this origin, we've got the equation that represents that. What is the height above the ground of the point when the rope where x is equal to two? So what this here is telling us, we are curious about what's gonna to happen to the height when x is equal to two. So this here is a substitution question. This x I'm gonna put into my height formula and that will tell me the height at that corresponding point. So let's start by jotting down that formula. So h is going to be equal to 2x, and then in brackets, x minus 1.5, close bracket, plus 1. I'm now going to take out the x's 
and put in 2 because I know x is equal to 2. So that's going to be 2 times 2 and then we're going to go times 2 minus 1.5 and then we're going to add 1. Um, so that 2 times 2 gets us to 4. 2 minus 1 and 1 half is 1 half and then we've got the plus 1. Just going to use my bed mass now. 2 times 1 half is 2 plus 1. That means h is going to be equal to 3. We haven't really been given any... Oh, no, we have been given units, so that there would be 3 meters. On to question number 5. Jake thinks of a number, so I'm going to call that number x, and he adds 5. So I'm going to start off with by going x plus 5. He then multiplies the result by 4. So this means I'm going to need a bracket, and I'm going to put the times 4 out front he gets an answer of 24. So I know whatever that is, that's going to be equal to 24. Find the number that Jake is missing. So I'm going to find out what X is. I could have used any letter. I chose X, but you could have chosen any letter. N might have been another um, good letter to use here. I'm going to start by going divide by 4, divide by 4. Um, you could have expanded the brackets if you want, but I chose not to. So we've got 6 there. I'm now going to go minus 5, minus 5, X is equal to 1. And if you think about it, that makes sense. So he thinks of a number as 5. 1 plus 5 gets me to 6. He then times it by 4, and that's going to get me to 24. And that was the number he was thinking of. Very last question. I've got a rectangular garden, which is n wide. So just going to draw a little diagram to help me out. That there is n wide. And the length is 2 meters longer than the width. So that would be n plus 2. Just noting my diagram, definitely not to scale because this length should be bigger than the other length. We've been asked to find a formula for the area in terms of n. So when it's asked for you to find a formula, it's just looking for you to come up with a bit of algebra that represents that scenario. So the area is what we're focusing on, and the area of a rectangle is base times height. In our case, the base of the shape is n, and the height of it is n plus 2. So that there, as simple as it is, that there would be the area for that. You could expand to get n squared plus 2n, but I personally think that step is unnecessary. It wouldn't really get you any extra marks. Um, so that wraps up the six achieved questions from the 2015 video. Just a reminder, these are all from the day one exam. Um, check out the day two exam if you... Um, are looking for more revision materials, keep an eye out for the other achieved questions, and there'll be heaps of stuff on the merit focus and the excellence focus as well.